This famous Mario Brothers mushroom is known in the video game for essentially boosting your health. It makes Mario bigger and stronger. And that actually has a lot of truth in real life, but probably not for the reason you initially thought. I finally found why this mushroom is so magical. And even better, I can now share with you some of the science. We should tell them how to do it right. I think it's the limitless drug. First, if you're new to mushrooming, don't go out and start eating this mushroom. It's not like I invented something. People were using it for centuries. You sleep good, you have appetite, you're happy. I want to share what happened. That's it. I will explain to you why you too are going to want to explore this mushroom further. And I will explain what the science says from 12,000 people who ate this mushroom. Keep watching if you know anybody who has any sort of pain, who has sleep issues, or addictions of any kind. The magic of Amidina muscaria. I've done a lot with this mushroom over the years. This is me from one of my multiple attempts to explore this mushroom. We found one. Here's another. That is the early stages. And this is me in 2007, pretending to take a bite out of this mushroom, which by the way, I do not recommend. For the first 15 years I knew this mushroom, I thought the best experience to have with it was just a full hallucinogenic trip. Of course, I was too cautious to try that, so I instead researched it a ton. I was fascinated by its historic use in the reindeer cultures of the far north, its potential ties to Christmas, and its unique chemistry. And of course, my biology friends and I always warned people you need to be careful with it. Definitely not a mushroom that you want to pick and eat because it is poisonous. And then I stumbled upon it in Scandinavia. Oh, wow. See, that one has a little bit of the yellowy orange. It was a huge patch in Sweden. Textbook perfect Amanita muscaria. And then I did a deep dive, two years of deep study with the experts in the field and found that it wasn't as dangerous as I previously thought. And there's this one, which is highly medicinal. That's Amanita Dreamer. It's a pseudonym she uses. She's one of the people paving the way forward in this mushroom revolution and trying to encourage people to give it a second chance. She was full of anxiety, having a hard time dealing with the world, and this mushroom changed the game for her. And, and it saved my life. Pretty much gotten to a point where I just didn't want to be alive anymore. Found the mushroom, did my research on it. There was a lot of bad information on the internet and I took a chance and took it anyway. And it turned out to be exactly what I needed to get off the benzos and to manage my panic and anxiety. I've told her story before, but it always blows me away how the fly agaric helped her. In fact, if you're ever going to experiment with this mushroom and want to do a full ceremony, she's the person to go to for the lowdown. I've done ceremonies with so many people now at high doses. However, the one thing that bothered me is that it just seemed to be a lot of anecdotal evidence. She was a great case in point, but there was not a ton of science. That is, until I met Baba Masha. This is the Russian scientist who did the first big survey study of Amanita. Baba Masha, as she goes by, is her pseudonym. It's not her real name. And she did that because the Russian government has really made it clear they want to shut down everything that she has to say about this mushroom and psychedelics. They've banned her channel in Russia multiple times. That, of course, is why she feels the need to cover her identity using these glasses and the wig just for her own safety. And that's why I felt very lucky to hear these words directly from her. Then I had bad condition with my back. I'm a doctor. I know what to use. I tried everything. And then they told me if I will make the tincture from raw Amanita muscaria, it will help me. I'm like, nah. But I didn't have a choice. I decided I'm going to try. I got about 12 mushrooms. And since then, I go to gym. I walk like crazy for 20 months. And my back just said, Good. She talked with me for a couple of hours and detailed all of the research that she did, which ended up in her book. But first, let me summarize what it is exactly that she did so you understand why the results she was finding are so interesting to me. Her Baba Masha channel in Russia was extremely popular, bringing in millions of views in the Russian-speaking world. Through this popularity, she started live streams and did surveys so they could talk about what they were doing with different psychedelics and how to be safe. In that process, some people mentioned they were microdosing with Amanita muscaria, something she herself said she was very skeptical of. My reaction was furious because I'm a doctor and I'm a mushroom hunter and people start writing me we're taking a manita for several years. I'm like, you're crazy. You're gonna kill your liver. You're gonna kill your brain. But she thought she'd study it with this newfound popularity and through this format. She had in the end 12,000 people filling out a survey as to how they used Amanita muscaria. What were they taking it for? Did it help? Did it hurt? How much? 
And this is what it seemed to be helpful for. And frankly, that's a ton of things. But I'm gonna pick three things that seem to be the real winners. The first was sleep. In fact, when asked about sleep, 73% of people said that it helped tremendously, which is huge. The next is for addiction. This chart right here showed high numbers for getting off of very heavy drugs. Microdosing is a great antidote any kind of addiction. Alcohol addiction, opioid addiction, designer drugs, amphetamine, cocaine, between 17 and 86 percent. In this case, I had to probe a little bit further and wonder about the placebo effect. Is that really what it was? There is no placebo for alcoholics. I have testimonies of people who are dying from alcoholics. We were taking alcohol in severe dosages for decades. And after a few courses, three, six months, one year, I have so many testimonies. I know it's not a placebo, you know? Finally, it seems to be an incredible painkiller when it's made into a tincture and rubbed onto the skin. Neuropathic pain, doesn't matter when it happens. You just put it all over your body. Half an hour, you're so happy. It doesn't cure the condition. It doesn't eliminate the cause, but it takes the pain away. It's not addictive like opioids. And you have energy, you're happy. It takes your bad mood, negative thinking away. All of what she was telling me is fascinating. And my first thought is, well, this is probably an example where we'll take a compound out of nature. We will patent it. We will make money off of it. And then it will be something in the pharmaceutical industry. But the problem seems to be that big business is not going to be able to make any money off of this. You cannot put it in a pill and start selling it because it doesn't work. Which their only small problem with that is that some of the studies that need to happen to show the effectiveness of it aren't going to happen because nobody's going to put in the investment into it. So here we are in a very interesting situation with this mushroom that grows symbiotically with trees, is hard to farm, and can't really be synthesized very easily. At this point, you might be thinking, hey, I might wanna try this mushroom myself, or maybe there's a few of you out there who are still pretty skeptical. I know I was. If that's the case, let me fill you in on a little bit more of the science, starting with the chemistry. There are two main active compounds in this mushroom, ibotenic acid and muscimol. Ibotenic acid, it's a bit of an upper. At high doses, it can cause nausea and even seizures. However, it is converted in the body to muscimol and it can be converted ahead of time. Muscimol is a GABA agonist. It has more calming effects. This company right here, Psyched Wellness, recently spent millions on clinical studies to prove that muscimol, if isolated in the way that they do, is safe in small doses. This bottle now represents the first product on the market to get the FDA approval stamp. They're marketing it as a sleep aid. And if you remember, Baba Masha noted that her studies showed it's helpful for sleep. But you should know that if you want to get the full benefits of this mushroom, you should probably go out into the woods and pick it yourself. If people want to do it, they have to do it on their own and not buy it on internet. And I know that's counterintuitive to most people, but let me just walk you through how it would work. First, go into the woods in season find it, pick it, then you dry it, then you're gonna make a tea out of it. Then you can either take small amounts of that liquid tea or turn that liquid into small gummies and then you can take those daily as a microdose. I say all this because you can't trust the source of dried mushrooms that you get in the mail. So the worst thing you can do, some chemical dumpsters mm -hmm. near the road, it sucks everything. It's really hard to know where people are getting their mushrooms from. And the amount of Amanita mascari grown in Chernobyl is enormous. Imagine people pick it up and sell it on the internet. Also, just as a warning here, it's not recommended to just go into the woods and start taking bites out of this mushroom raw. One bite could be too much, and that's the biggest risk in this case. The whole point is to make a larger batch, find your microdose. Also, we're not talking about macrodoses. It's not that a macrodose or a hero's journey doesn't give you some insight. Aminita Dreamer definitely does ceremonies with them, and Baba Masha says that they potentially give you some insight as well. Amanita brings you there, but I always give a description, like when you take, let's say, magic mushroom, it's like you're driving to Los Angeles from Malibu on nice Mercedes, and when you take Amanita, you go to Los Angeles underground, and you have to chew the ground your teeth. The result oh, is God. the same, but 
the price for it is very different. If you are a little overwhelmed by everything you need to know at this point, but you still want to explore this mushroom, I do want to point you in the right direction. Now, clearly, I'm not saying go out and start eating Amanita, but I do think you should start exploring this mushroom yourself. And this is how you would start. First, pick up Baba Masha's book. There's a few chapters right here at the beginning. It's only about this much of the book. One of the best overviews of Amanita that I've seen so far, and I've done a lot of research on this. The whole back half of the book, which is about this much of the book, talks about all of the individual studies. You don't have to read every individual one, but it literally is um, giving you the details of what everyone said through her survey study. It's not a double-blind placebo study, but it's the first step. The second thing you should do, watch the full interview I did with Baba Masha. She walks you through the process of going and getting your own, some of the things you have to be careful about, and it's nice to hear it from her. And I would recommend at least take that hour to watch it a little bit more. Third, go to Amanita Dreamer and learn from her. She spends all of her time detailing things that you need to know about how to prepare Amanita, things to be careful of if you wanna do a full ceremony, that kind of thing. She's a great resource. Last thing, do not use Amanita if you have any of these contraindications. Don't use it if you're pregnant. Baba Masha actually took it to some of her guinea pigs and tested it out on the pregnant females and she found it did cause some problems with those pregnant females. Don't use it if you have bipolar or schizophrenia. Probably a good recommendation. Three, Baba Masha found that it seemed to pass kidney stones. So if you have a predisposition to kidney stones, you might want to be careful at using Amanita muscaria. After reviewing those things and making sure you are in the clear, now, maybe with the help of some other experienced mushroom hunters, you can start exploring this mushroom. In fact, I tried this mushroom. Measuring out the Amanita caps. And I will say that it is the one mushroom that changed my mind at the very beginning of using natural compounds from the wild. And the reason for that is that it was an interesting process to go out into the field, pick my own, cut it, dry it, make a tea from it, and then figure out what is my microdose. And what that did is it allowed me to start listening to my body, trying to figure out, okay, where's that threshold for me? Let me write down, how am I feeling? Is this something that it feels like is good for me or not good for me? And through that process, I actually, in the end, decided that I'm good. I got what I needed out of Amanita muscaria. I am generally don't have any anxiety, any depression, no sleep problems. I'm very physically fit. And at this moment, I don't need Amanita anymore. And that is the state you're probably trying to get to. And in fact, why would you use Amanita muscaria if you're already very good? It's probably only used if you do have some of the main things, which are sleep issues, pain issues, and potentially trying to get over some sort of addiction issues. All of those though, would be potential uses where you would wanna try this. So I wanna know in the comments down below if you've tried it, it will help others as they're on their journey as well. And if you have any other questions, leave it down there. The community here is great down in the comments section. All right, thank you all for watching. We'll see you in the next one.